How you doing folks? Well, um, off camera I kind of tore into the Briggs engine a little bit because uh, I uh, started to get a little impatient to be honest with you and I was also working on uh, another little uh, engine and I was trying to repair a lawnmower so I had the tools out and that as well too so I decided to have a look. So um, I haven't gone too far but what I did was I got the head off so um, let's, uh, let's have a look and see how, sh uh, uh, how we're looking here. So uh, anyway, basically here's the uh, here's the engine with the head off. So ba it, it looks like I've actually done a lot more than I have. The carb is only really held on with um, two bolts there, and the fuel tank is bolted onto the bottom of it. The exhaust came off very easily, which I was delighted about. Fan shroud is off. The carburetor is there. Uh, there's the exhaust. There's the fuel tank, and um, there's the cylinder head. And what I immediately noticed is the engine is actually really, really clean inside. Um, you can actually still see the honing marks inside of it. So, you can see the sort of the swirl marks in it there. So that's brilliant. I'm, I'm actually uh, very, very happy with that. So, um, that definitely uh, bodes well for this restoration. Um, and I'm certainly not going to go uh, honing that uh, cylinder. And that's obviously not been the cause of our um, smokiness. Uh, I'd say the smokiness is caused by the... Um, uh, the carburetor uh, needing adjustment. Um, I'm not even sure if it was burning oil, to be honest with you. Anyway, we can we can kind of get into that in further detail at a later stage. So um, yeah, the next thing to do is I'm going to pull the pull the flywheel off, and take the magneto off, and um, take all the rest of the kind of the ancillaries off, <laughs> such as they are, um, and then we can um, we can get the crankcase open. Now I still have to drain the oil out of it as well too. So that's uh, that's another thing to be done. But um, Really, there's probably about uh, 45 minutes left in stripping this engine. You know, I mean, it's it, they're they're very very simple little machines. Um, it only took me uh, 15 minutes to take the head off. Um, so uh, yeah, we can uh, we can get stuck into that. So let's see. Okay, so let's make a bit more progress with this now. Um, we can take off the um, starter clutch assembly, which is this lad here. Had to get reconditioned as well too, along with everything else. So we put it aside and take off the flywheel, which should just it just pops off. Little tap on the uh, there we go. Okay, and take our key, our wood rough key out as well too. Put that aside, and we can take off the. Um, points cover and we'll take off our magneto then afterwards so let's make a bit of space here you might wonder why I'm working on the floor but that's because uh, I have uh, quite a bit of stuff up on the bench already and I like to kind of use the bench for just sort of doing um, individual assembly for kind of the whole, uh, the whole engine and I'm just too lazy to clean everything off if the truth be known Okay, that's the points cover off. Take the points out. Put that bolt back in there because that's it's gonna be one of those things that'll end up going missing on me. And keep the points as a spare set. Now the uh, the wire here it's just held in place with a little spring, so you just put, press the spring down to get the wires out. We need a little uh, long nose pliers of some description just to uh, just to get at them. Okay, so um, you know what I must do is actually uh, put some tape over the uh, the zoom function on this camera because every time you go to press the record button, the uh, you, you end up pressing the zoom as well too. Which is a little bit inconvenient. Okay, so you can see now there's a spring actually comes uh, comes away separately to the uh, the condenser. We'll drop that in, drop that in there as well too. And those wires should just come out of there. They're just held in place with a gob of sealant, and we will we put more sealant in when we're reassembling everything. So uh, just keep the two wires together for the moment. Now we need to take off the magneto itself. So there's a Phillips head screw here, which also holds on the um, 
uh, it holds on the uh, vein for the governor. I have to say, one thing I'm really enjoying about this project is how easily everything is coming apart. Whereas I shouldn't say things like that at this early stage because I might have just jinxed myself. Now, there's the there's the air vein there now, so that's a separate little assembly in itself. And there is a um, there's a bolt here that, remo that gets removed as well. And then that removes the magneto. You'll see the holes are slotted because uh, you actually have to set the air gap on the magneto. And there's a bonding strap on it there as well too. So uh, pop that bit, that lad back in there. You can see that kind of residue that's on this engine. It's like cobwebs, as I said before. It's it's kind of it's weird. As I said, I don't know what this engine was really used for, and certainly wasn't used much by the looks of things. Um, okay, so that's that's those back in place as well too. I'll just tread that in a little bit more, just so it doesn't come free. Okay. And we just take off our cover for the, um, this is where the valve springs are. Oh. It looks like these are actually literally finger tight. That one's out. Um, and there we go. Crankcase breather. Okay, so now we have um, it's just another little uh, panel around the other side here, which is just for directing airflow. Show you that there now. So take that out. Take the bolt out even. That comes off. So if this engine was used for any great length of time, it would have overheated with all of the the stuff that's clogging up the air the the air passages on it. But. Uh, yeah, so that's um, basically a top end stripped down. So uh, the next thing we really need to do is we need to uh, stri uh, drain the oil out of it. So uh, what, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. You can use this here, which is the plug for draining the oil, which I think we will use in this instance, or you can just uh, pour it out the, uh, the fill. So uh, I've screwed this uh, engine down to this um, uh, to this piece of wood basically, and uh, what I'm going to do is remove the screws first of all, so we can pick it up. But I'll actually just crack that anyway because I probably will want to take it out one way or another when it's screwed down it's a much easier op operation. You know what, one of the things I really like about this engine is how light it is. I mean look at that. Like, There's no weight in that whatsoever. And after having worked on um, diesel engines recently and the Lister engine and everything like that, it's one of the things I'm kind of enjoying about it. It's just, no, nothing back breaking about this, it's just a handy little nice project. Just to tinker with when it's once again lashing rain outside. I think we had our month of summer in Ireland unfortunately. So now I let the oil drain, take the fill plug out as well too just while it's draining. <laughs> it's draining out the fill plug as well as the drain plug maybe. I think there's a bit of fuel in the oil there. So doesn't really surprise me to be honest with you too much. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a bit of diesel in there and I'm going to actually swish it around just to get the uh, residue out and try and make the operation just a little bit cleaner uh, just when we actually come to splitting the case because that's really horrible looking oil. So uh, I have a can of diesel here and um, somewhere here. I need a little bit but I only need a little bit. 
be a crankcase and it's only hold with a half a litre of fuel in it, or half a litre of oil anyway, so. Okay, so now I'll put the fill plug back in. Got the box over here. So put the fill plug back in and give the give the engine a good shake just to uh, clear out all the gunk and put it on its back there from the uh, away from the crankcase breather. Okay, that should be pretty good now, so let's let's drain that out. That should make things a little bit nicer to work on in there now. You probably find a lot of these single cylinder engines like this don't get much by way of maintenance when they should be getting it. This particular engine, because it's gold, would suggest to me that it was a replacement engine for whatever the original equipment it was on was. Um, there was a uh, uh, Briggs and Stratton did a whole um, range of uh, um, gold engines, uh, which are repower engines they call them. But um, so this is probably what this was. Um, maybe it had. A completely different type of engine on it altogether. Or maybe it was a project, who knows? I suppose we'll never find out. But nonetheless, there we go. So, yeah, the diesel will uh, will leave a kind of an oily, filmy residue on the uh, on everything inside, so it won't um, it won't leave things prone to or open to rusting before I actually do split the case. So. Um, but you know what we're going to do is we're going to actually we're going to actually go and split the case now. Just to be honest with you, I'm impatient. Okay, so I broke the torque on all of these uh, bolts. Now to buzz them out. cover should come off with a light tap of the plastic hammer. Something's got something's falling asunder inside anyway. Alright. So the camshaft fell out of its position. Would you look at that for a camshaft? Yeah, pop that there into its into its original home. And the two cam followers fell out as well too, so we put them aside as well. And we've got a the dinkiest little crankshaft you'd ever see. Unless you're into actual model engines. Like, look at that. Alright, just pour the last of it back out of the bottom of the crankcase. So, what we can do now is get a cloth, get a clean cloth. I'm going to have a look and see. There's no evidence of metal or anything like that in the bottom of the crankcase, which is fantastic. Because I really do not want to see, because that would suggest a bearing failure. The journals on the crankshaft 
look brilliant. So what we do is, there are locking tabs on the, um, the locking tabs kind of form part of the oil slinger, which is the little sort of fork thing there. See, uh, see that there? That's uh, that's that's basically how your engine's lubricated. All that does is just splashes oil around. Simple but effective. Which is how these engines are, and that's they're they're all the better for it. So I'm gonna put a cloth down here. Stand it upside down. And we take those two bolts out and we take the con rod out and have a look. At least then we know what we're looking at. I often find when I'm working on things like this that uh, music gets stuck in my head. I actually have Sprawl 2 by Arcade Fire stuck in my head at the moment. So if you want something to listen to while you're doing this, there's not going to be any copyright infringement if you stick it on separately. <laughs> so uh, it's a good song. I recommend I, I recommend Arcade Fire to anybody to be honest with you, they're a brilliant band. Okay, so I had the locking tabs bent back now. Um, took a little bit of doing to be honest with you. And it's a 716 headed bolt. And which takes the conrod off. And once we have the conrod off, we can withdraw the crankshaft and we can have a look at that. So there's one of your uh, Conrad bolts, which absolutely must, must be torqued to the correct value when reassembling the engine. If you don't, you'll break something. If you're going to go that way, to be honest with you, and you're not going to torque things like that, don't bother trying to restore engines because it's just not for you. Um, there are certain things you can get away without torquing, but uh, Conrad bolts and uh, cylinder head bolts are not, the, are not those items. Now, so there's your uh, little oil slinger there, uh, or oil thrower, I suppose they'd call it. A slinger would be a little bit different. That'd be a kind of a wa uh, an eccentric washer. Now, how how about that? That is looking beautiful. That's exactly what we were hoping for in this engine. So let's push our piston out. Now, how would you look? It's like a little baby piston. And the, uh, the journals on it, the big ends, look fantastic. There is no untoward rock. You, you can obviously move it side to side, but what you're looking for is a bit of rock. Like, you know, if you can basically rock the piston left to right on the uh, on the gudgeon pin, that's when you'd have a problem. So let's get our crankshaft out now. And that basically, that folks basically is the engine stripped. Now what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for any scoring or uh, pitting or discoloration or anything like that on the crankshaft and to be honest with you I'm not seeing anything untoward. It's like a brand new crankshaft, which I'm delighted about. So what I'll do is I'll spray this all with some light oil just to um, uh, protect it, make sure it doesn't go rusty in, in the meantime. Um, but I'll be doing very little with that crankshaft now to be honest with you. I'll be literally uh, just um, uh, cleaning up the uh, external surfaces refitting it and um, to be honest with you I really wouldn't have even, even needed to split the crank the crankcase but you know to be honest with you I'm, it's it's as much for my own entertainment as anything else so uh, let's, uh, let's get a bit of oil onto this it's a uh, engine oil actually I think it might be gearbox oil but it doesn't really matter it's just a protector for the moment Assembly lube, I suppose you could call it, but it's not uh, It's not for assembly. I'll be wiping everything down and degreasing it before I put it back together again. So, um, we'll have a look next at our cam followers, which are looking beautiful. Let's have a quick wipe. Nothing wrong with that one. And where's the other one gone? Here it is here. Nothing wrong with that one. Okay, so we have two decent cam followers there. Yep, happy with that. Okay, let's look at our camshaft. We look at the lobes. So we're looking for, again, discoloration, hitting, scoring, gouging, 
refreshing. To be honest with you, this engine has got sod all hours on it and really didn't need to come apart, but anyway, it's apart now, so we have to have a look inside it. So, the bearing surfaces are these, uh, this lad here, so we'll just have a quick look around there. Perfect. And perfect. Okay. So basically now we have the whole engine stripped. As you can see. And there's the rest of the bits there. And uh, now it's essentially a case of just cleaning it all up. New gaskets, reassemble it. And uh, in the meantime what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the carburetor soaking in some uh, geyser. And uh, get, that, uh, get that all cleaned up. But um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pick this up in a future video. So thanks for watching, folks, and uh, I will uh, see you soon.